Hey guys, let's look at more rational equations. Let's go do a relatively simple one to start off with. And it looks like this. If you want to pause and copy, go ahead. And if you recall, the way we do this when you have rational equations, which means fra you know fractional equations, you take the uh, least common multiple of the denominators and multiply the entire thing by that. So in the case of 2, 4, and 6, you know, if you ever forget, you can always just go multiply these together and you get 48. But it's a lot easier to use something like 12 because all three of those numbers will go into 12. So let's do that. And the way we did this was to go, you know, if you want to look at it like that, you can. And when you multiply this one first, when you multiply by 12 and you're dividing by 2, you're actually multiplying by 6. So your, you know, uh, operation is 6 times y, which will give you 6y. All right? Next, if you're multiplying by 12 and you're dividing by 4, you're actually multiplying by 3. So 3 times 1 is 3, so plus 3. And then the same thing here, if you are multiplying by 12 and dividing by 6, you're multiplying by 2, so that's going to give you 2 times y or 2y. Uh, 2y goes over here, and we get 4y. Uh, 3 goes over here, and you get a negative 3. And then, of course, you divide by 4, and you get negative 3 fourths as your answer. That's relatively simple. Let's go to a slightly different one. Pause and copy. <clears throat> All right. Um, this is slightly different, but it's not that big of a deal. You're just going to do exactly the same thing. Look at those denominators. What do t, 3t, and 3 all go into? What's the smallest thing you can you know, get them to go into? Um, the, the answer is 3t, right? Okay, so we're good right here. So let's go ahead and do 3t. And if you want to go over 1 to remind yourself it's in the numerator, you can do it. All right, so let's take care of this one first. This would be 3t times this divided by t, which means you're, you know, the t's will cancel. You're actually just, divide, or just multiplying by 3. So that would be 3 times t minus 2 and counting. All right, done. So the same thing here. Let's go 3t oh, divided by 3t. That's just 1, right? So it's just going to be 14. It's just going to be 14, nothing else. All right, minus. And then this one. Uh, we'll have, you know, we're multiplying by 3t and we're dividing by 3, which means we're actually multiplying by just t, right? So that'll be uh, minus 1 times t, which is just t there. So we carry, uh, uh, distributed the uh, 3 there. So that'll be 6, then 14 minus t. And then we can, let's see, we can move this negative t over. That turns into 4t. We can move this 6 over here. That becomes 14 plus 6, and then we have t is equal to 5. Okay, if you ever want to check these, you can stick it back in there and check it if you want to, just to make sure it works. All right. Okay, let's try another one. And pause and copy. All right. <clears throat> and, you know, same old thing. And remember, if you want to treat this as over 1, you can do that, make it a little easier on yourself. And don't forget also, when you have a denominator like this, like n plus 2, you can't break this up. This has to stay clumped together since there's a plus or, or there's a minus in between there. So your actual new, uh, den uh, excuse me, common denominator will be 5 and then n plus 2. And if you want to go over 1, that's fine. Okay. So it has to have this in it and it has to have the 5 in it. 1, that's, that's okay. That we can leave that. Okay. So let's look at the first term here. Let's look at this part right here. Well, obviously, if we are multiplying by this and this and dividing by that, we're actually multiplying by 5. Okay, so we have a 5n. Done. Okay, second one, if we are actually multiplying by 5 times n plus 2 and dividing by 5, well, the 5s cancel. So we have minus 3 times n plus 2. All right? And then 0, you know, times anything is 0. So we're done. And there's nothing else we need to do there. So that just, nothing happens there. So we're gone, all right? So we have 5n minus 3n minus 6 equals 0. And we have, that gives us 2n. The 6 goes over here and becomes positive 6, and the n becomes 3. And there we go, all right? And by the way, we can check this, okay? We say the answer is n plus, n equals 3, all right? Well, let's just stick it in there. That's a 3. That's a 3. Well, now we have as a fraction, we have 3 over 3 plus 2, right? Or 3 fifths. Well, is 3 fifths minus 3 fifths 0? Yeah, sure it is. So we just proved it was right. You don't have to do that, but I might. If you have extra time on a test or something, um, or if, I don't know, somebody's, you know, uh, 
holding like you know nunchucks to your head and threatening you if you don't get it right you can check your answer all right pause it and copy this all right well i think it's pretty clear what the common denominator is again it's going to be a 3n and an n plus 4 and if you want to go over oops go over the one we can there all right let's take care of this one first and the three ends will cancel we have two times n plus four and we're done all right the second one we have the n plus four is canceling out we have a minus therefore uh, two again times three n and again zero times anything is zero so you can just forget that totally so let's distribute two to two n plus eight minus 6n equals 0. And we'll pull the 8 over here, and we'll get 2n minus 6n is negative 4n. And then we'll divide by negative 4, and we get n is equal to 2. Okay, and the method's the thing. You just have to know you're multiplying everything by the common denominator, and make sure you treat ones with a plus or a minus as one unbreakable denominator. You can't split up, okay? Here's another one. Pause it yourselves. Go ahead and solve without my help. And when you're done solving it, go ahead and uh, hit the unpause button. Okay, I'm assuming you hit the unpause button after you've solved it. So x times x plus 2 is what we're going to multiply by all the way across. All right, so let's take care of this one first. And what cancels out? The x's, right? So 4 times x plus 2. All right, done. On this one, what cancels out? The x plus 2's cancel out, right? So we have 7 times x, so minus 7x. This, of course, always ends up being 0 in these kinds of problems. So 4x plus 8 minus 7x equals 0. 4x minus 7x is negative 3x. Then negative 8 on the right side. Good grief, what a weird answer. 8 thirds. Okay. All righty. We'll just uh, assume that that's right. Okay. All right, we'll try one more. And if you want to, go ahead and copy and pause it and solve it yourself and see if you get it right. Okay, we'll assume that you've copied and paused it or absolutely rebelled at authority and not done it at all. No, it's okay. All right, well, let's do the first one here. And what cancels out on the first one? The P's, right? So we have 4, then we have P minus 4. Done. All right, the second one, what cancels out? P minus 4s, right? Okay, so we have minus, then you have 3 times the P. And then, of course, this is still 0. All right, so 4P, 4 times negative 4 is negative 16, minus 3P equals 0. So 4P minus 3P is 1P. 16 goes over, becomes 16. Yink, there we go. Okay. By the way, let's just check it and see if we're right. We say P is 16, right? So let's just put it on here. 4 over 16, well, that reduces to what very common fraction? 1 fourth, right? Okay. Then we have here 16 minus 4, right? Which means we have 3 over 12, right? So we have 1 fourth, which is that one, minus... 3 over 12, which is, by the way, reduced 1 fourth. Does that equal 0? Yes, it does. There we, go. we just proved it works. Okay. All right, we got two practice problems, so pause it and try practice problem A. Okie doke, let's try it. T times T minus 3 is your common denominator. Let's do this one first. The T's cancel. You have 5 times T minus 3 minus two times, and then this time the t minus threes cancel. So you have t times two, which is two t, and then this just ends up being zero times whatever, okay. So five t minus 15 minus two t equals zero. Five t minus two t is three t. I move this over, it becomes 15, and t is equal to 15 divided by three. There we go, okay. All right. All right, try B and uh, pause it and try B. Come, we'll come back in a second. 
All right, same old, same old. Y times Y plus, oops, that's a Y minus three. Y minus three, there you go. And let's do this one first. Y's cancel out, we have eight times Y minus three, done. Plus, Y minus three's cancel, we have a five times Y. This is always zero. All right, eight Y minus 24 plus five Y equals zero. 8y plus 5y is 13y. What in the world? It's a weird answer. 13y is 24, so y is equal to 24 thirteenths. Or 1 point, ooh, it's a repeating decimal. 846153, and that repeats. Okay, anyway, that's good enough. Don't worry about that. Okay, all right. Hope you had fun with those. You guys take it easy. We'll see you next time.